where we'll be looking at project conversions so that your current markup RXP projects can use the full chart layout. Markup RXP can support lots of different types of projects, whether that's being a, a chart a image that's been taken with a camera or a PDF chart that's been fully loaded into the system. Now, we did have a think about whether we should support project conversions from previous versions of Markup RXP to full grid mode. As you can probably imagine, there are a lot of moving parts and a lot of changes that have gone on to uh, support this new update. However, we felt that you know people will be putting a lot of work into their projects and seeing the pages laid out in full chart mode, I think is a really valuable addition to the application. Therefore, we have introduced a, a, a means of converting your projects from previous versions of Markup RXP to the new full chart uh, layout system. It doesn't cover all of the brand new parts of, of version 8, but it certainly will get you quite a way to there. In this video, I'm going to look at four different layouts uh, or four different approaches to converting your project because not all projects can be converted and we, we will look at these different um, scenarios as we go through the video. So the four different scenarios I'm going to look at is number one is to do nothing. So you can simply update to version 8 and you can continue to use your project as is. Um, the option for full grid mode will be there, uh, but you don't have to activate it or go through the steps to convert your project. The next step is what I'm going to call the happy path. This is where you can go through the process of converting your chart from a version 7 to version 8. And Markup RxB will be able to stitch your pages together. You won't get any problems at all and you'll be up and running straight away. The next scenario is where you run through the update process, but Mark Barxby's had a little bit of a problem trying to stitch pages together. Maybe uh, you've got some pages that have different heights or maybe different widths. So Mark Barxby is going to need a little bit of a hand putting those pages together, and we'll look at that. And finally, there will be charts that have been loaded into Mark Barxp or the previous versions of Mark Barxp, where the, the configuration of the pages, the actual layout of the pages can't really be converted into a full chart. Maybe the pages aren't in the right order or, or maybe that they're just not designed to be laid out in a, a full grid pattern. So the first project conversion uh, process that we're going to look at is doing nothing. So You've just updated to the latest version of Markup RXP. You now can come and open your project. So let's open our project here. So this is going to initialize up uh, the normal way. We've already seen uh, the, the, a bit of the, the user interface in previous videos. And as you can see, uh, we can click the full chart view here. And rather than seeing the full chart view, we get this page. And this is the page that tells you that we have to do a little bit of work to get full chart view to, to, to be operational for this project. So I'll just quickly walk you through this page. It just says we're configuring the chart for full chart view. Uh, your chart is from a previous version of Markup RXP and we'll need to run through some configuration steps in order to, to display it in full chart view. Now the results may depend, may vary depending on how each page has previously been configured. And in some cases, it might not even be possible to successfully display this chart in full grid mode. And we'll look at those throughout the video. When the process is complete, we'll let you know of any issues. We'll put up a summary form so you can see what's actually been done. But before you do any work uh, in converting these projects, we do recommend that you back up your chart because this is a one way conversion. Uh, and then when you're ready to start uh, the conversion process, you can click on the button here. So that's getting, um, that's that, that would take you through the, the, the auto loader process to convert your chart from a version seven or previous version into version eight. Um, 
But we're just going to have a look at actually doing nothing. And what does it mean to do nothing? Well, all it means is that this particular PDF has 22 pages in. And there's our full 22 pages. Uh, and we're just, we could just leave them there. We don't need to change them. We can keep them in single page mode. You can see there's a little bit of markup being done here. We still have our symbols that are defined. In our key view, uh, we haven't added any keys to this particular project, but you can still see that we have the, the key symbol definition here. So we could go in and choose to just click uh, and go to a, a, a key page. I'm guessing they're right down at the end. That sort of page there, if we add that one, and we can just uh, drag that information in. So we can still go in and update our um, our project. Click the done button. So if you are loading a, a key page in at this stage, sometimes what you might have to do is simply just restart the project. You know, just, just jump over to the markup form, restart the project, reload the project up, and that'll just reinitialize the search if you're adding one of these key pages. In addition, we have uh, no pictures defined. So again, we can come in here and maybe we will decide to just jump to our first page here and we might want to add our picture here. So this, this is just using your chart exactly as you have been. If you don't want to go into full grid mode, you don't have to. And click that done button again. And we, it just lets us see what that final chart will be. We can click back over to markup. We can then select our particular uh, symbols that we're, we're interested in um, here, for example. And then we can start marking up. Uh, just marking up those symbols at the bottom. And you can see the counts coming down up here. So that's your first option, that you don't actually have to go into full chart mode or do any work to convert to full chart mode if you don't want to. Uh, and that will still let you mark up your, your project and continue uh, as you as you like. This is the, uh, the most basic option. Um, uh, and that should get you up and running. So the next option uh, for project conversion is what we're referring to as the happy path. What this means is that the project will get converted by Markup RxP, and once it's been converted, everything should be set up pretty much for you and you'll be able to get on with your stitching straight away. There shouldn't be too much more manual intervention required once the conversion has completed. So I'm just gonna use exactly the same project that we've just looked at. We're gonna open him back up, but this time, rather than doing nothing, we're going to look at uh, clicking on this button to configure, configure our full chart view. Now remember, please back up your chart before continuing as this is a one-way conversion. That's important. But what I would recommend as well, just spend a little bit of time here, click on your key. So you know you've got a, a single key page that's already been added. And if we look at our pictures, we've already added our picture in. So that's that's going to help us as we go through the conversion process, knowing that we've got a, one key and a picture page already defined. And we'll see why uh, as we go through this. So the next step is once you make sure you've got your backup of your chart, click this button and you're going to get another little pop up, which is our full chart layout warning, which just is basically saying, do you have a backup of your project before you continue? Do you really have a backup? And if you do, then click the yes button. What that's going to do is this is going to take you into a cut down version of the auto loader process. And this is how Mark Bar XP can convert your previous version, uh, project version into the new full chart layout. So the green pages as before are the pages that have been highlighted with the grids on them. And you can see the grid sizes, the pink pages will be excluded. So we can see we have a total of 22 pages in this particular project. And the pages that have been excluded are the key pages, the thread pages, the picture page, and the instruction page. So we don't want those pages, but everything else is pretty much looking okay. You still have all these buttons at the bottom. So if you did want to select all, you could do that. If you wanted to select none of them, maybe there's a lot of pages that have been included that shouldn't have been, you can go down there. Or alternatively, if you wanted to invert whatever selection was there, 
that's what the invert button is for so I'm just going to select all pages here and I'm going to exclude these pages because we don't want those pages included uh, if you did want a little bit more detail remember you can double tap to enlarge here just to see that page in a little bit more detail and we can hit the back button to go back um, so these these are the pages that pretty much look okay we've also included a help system that you can click on which will take you to help.markuprxp.co.uk and when this loads up it just gives you a little bit more information about uh, the, this particular process and what's involved in this process so you can you can get a little bit more few few more details in doing that hitting the done button will take you back to mark mark bar xp if at any stage in this process you're not comfortable you can click the cancel button that will take you out of this process and take you back to your original project so at this stage we are happy that we've selected our chart pages so we can click next mark bar xp will then go into the page layout so we want to know uh, is the configuration of our pages laid out correctly now mark bar xp is going to do its best to try and lay out these pages for you so it knows that the 16 pages were selected so the options that you're going to get are 1 by 16 2 by 8 4 by 4 8 by 2 and 16 by 1 but this configuration here remember we can zoom in you can kind of see here that even on the at the thumbnail level you can make out that this configuration looks okay and you'll have a good idea from your pdf anyway what the configuration should be these particular layout options here are if you if you need to tweak the layout slightly so the page numbering directions you can see that three four five and six go across uh, as indicated by the arrow here but if your page layout was slightly different and three four five and six were to go down the page you could just click that button there and now you can see three four five and six have gone down the page and then you've got seven eight nine ten and so on so that's what the first change in uh, layout is the second layout uh, layout option is where does that first page get laid out there are some charts that put this towards the end of the document and there are some charts that put this at the beginning of the document so here our number three page is at, the is at the top but you can click this so now if we click this button you can see the three pages now at the bottom and number 15 is at the top so what it's doing is it's flipping uh, the location of the pages we found that those two configuration options uh, are, are accounted for a lot of chart layout and allowed you to lay out your chart correctly without having to uh, manipulate your pdf in an external application okay so we're happy with the layout everything's looking good there uh, we'll jump over to the next page and here this is where we select our key pages now if you remember we checked before we started the conversion process to say what key pages did we have and we did already have a key page included but what I'm going to do is I'm in, going to include these two key pages anyway so you can see the impact of selecting additional key pages when you've already got a key page selected which is not a problem so that's that stage and again we can double click on these pages to make sure that we're happy that those are the key pages that we want included which is great and then the final page is to select our picture pages and we already had our picture page selected but again i'm going to select this page just to show you what happens when we double up our selections and we can check all the pages just by having a look so at the end of the picture page this is the last part of the conversion process after this stage you can't cancel um, so clicking uh, here you will now see that market bar xp is saving the changes that you've made so it says just a moment please and this is when it pops up the um, the conversion summary uh, and so in the summary what it's telling us is it's found that Marco Bar XP thinks there should be four pages across there should be four pages down so that's the full layout of, of your full page configuration now we only selected two key pages but there was already a key page selected so Marco Bar XP has just added those additional key pages to your selection so that's why it's saying three 
and we only selected one picture page but again there was there was already a picture page selected so we've got two picture pages but mark bar xp is telling us here that the configuration has been successful so if we click our ok button it takes us back to single page mode and now what we can do is we can click on our full chart mode and here you can see that our bit of markup has already been identified here in full uh, full grid mode full chart mode and what we can do now is we can click our preview button because this particular chart had been auto loaded what that meant was we already have all of our symbols defined so now what we can do is we can click our preview button and we can see the full layout of the chart that we're interested in and once you've got that full layout you can zoom right in you could take that preview off and then mark up our XP will bring that information in if you wanted to know where you were exactly in the pattern click on your link views here and then just go to single page mode Marker bar XP will update and you can immediately see that you're on page 7 of 16 remember you had 22 pages in the original document now Marker bar XP is only including the 16 pages of your document which are your 16 chart pages that you've included so we've removed those additional pages we can pop over to the key here and you can see here that the key has our three pages in here this was the original page that we've added and this page and this page were the two that were added from the uh from the conversion process so we can jump back to this page if we didn't want that page and delete it sometimes the key pages might not line up perfectly so you can just jump into the edit mode here and just do some uh, minor changes to where you want to show uh, the key for that page and in the picture page this was the picture page that we did um, and this is the picture page that Mark bar xp has extracted from uh, the, the the page that was selected so again we don't need both pages so we can just choose to jump up here and delete one of them but now that kind of really wraps up if we just click the one to one here so that kind of wraps up what is required to get your version 7 project converted uh, into a, a full chart layout in the new version of Marker Bar XP. This one is assuming that it's been previously auto loaded, that all your symbols are defined, and that all your key pages fit together nicely. Uh, there's no warnings, uh, and you, you're ready. You're ready to go straight off and mark up and select symbols on your page, and, and you can start your stitching straight away. So the next. Uh, project conversion template we're going to look at is when your project will be converted by markup rxp but the conversion process uh, needs a little bit more work to get the final layout correct it's still doable markup rxp is flexible enough to make these things work but there's a little bit more effort in getting this set up you're probably going to find um this happening when you've uh, had a previous project that maybe wasn't auto loaded and maybe some of the pages you've adjusted for overlap and some of the pages you haven't adjusted for overlap that means the pages are going to be slightly different sizes so when you're trying to fit them all together market bar xp is going to ask you for a, a little bit more information to figure out how that should be done okay so let's open up this particular project this is a, a freebie maui princess from uh, heaven and earth design just give this a second to load so this is our maui princess and there are 44 pages of this design and we can just zoom into any of those pages it doesn't really matter and have a look at it and you can sort of see the layout so a lot of the pages have already been uh, adjusted for overlap here and we have already defined all of the symbols that we wanted on this particular project so I'm just going to quickly run through the process. You've already seen this for the happy path. So we're just going to say, yes, we want to continue. And yes, we have a backup. Now here, again, Marker Bar XP will try and identify the pages with grids on. So we'll just take a quick look through. And you can kind of see the pattern emerging via the thumbnails here. So there's a few more pages in this option. But we just want to make sure that all the pages are included. So here we, are, we have 36 of 44 pages. So that looks good 
And Mark Bar XP is showing us how it thinks it should be lay, laying those pages out, which you can kind of look at the last pages in each row and the last pages of each column to see, does it look right? So this looks pretty good. It's a six by six pattern. So click next. Now, in terms of the key pages, I happen to know in this particular project, those are the three key pages and these are the, the thread pages, which we don't need. So we're going to include them. And for the, our picture page, we would like this particular page. It's sometimes useful just to check the rest of the pattern to see if there is anything else that you would like included uh, in your in your picture pages because you might want you might want to have I don't, I don't know here whether you might want your instruction pages included as well you could just include that page as, if you would like to that's completely up to you but we're just going to keep things fairly simple so because we've reached our uh, picture page here we can now click the next button to complete the cycle. So that's just saving those changes and that's going to pop up our project summary uh, page. Now you can see here that the, the project summary page is a little bit different and it says issues were detected. So we'll work through this form to tell you what's going on. So Marco Bar XP thinks that there are six pages across and six pages down, which is correct. There are the three key pages that we selected and the one picture page. But Mark of RXP has detected issues with your page layout. So for some reason, it's tried to put the pages together into a six by six layout. So it's, it's picked uh, all of those pages, but it's, it's had trouble putting them all together. So it gives you some clues to say that make sure that all charts in the same row of, of pages have the same height and all charts in the same column must be the same width. We're going to display some red triangles and we're going to put them on pages where they are in rows that have a problem or the column that has the problem. But it's not likely that all the pages in that row or column are incorrect. It will just be one or two of those pages that maybe need to be tweaked to get that uh, working properly. We also show uh, the page sizes. So you should be able to scan across a row or scan down a column and look at all the page sizes and it, I'm hoping that it'll be fairly obvious as to which page needs to be updated and we're going to look at that in this particular example. And when you've identified the page that is the problem, we can simply just jump into the adjust grid function and edit the grid to readjust it to be the correct size. And we'll look at that again. And when all the triangles have been resolved, so as you're working through adjust grid and you go back to full grid mode um, and you're fixing the, the problems up, more of these red triangles should, should start disappearing until you get to the point where you have no triangles, all the red triangles are gone, and then you're ready to start marking up. Okay, so let's have a look and see what that process looks like. So we've been taken back to single page mode, so everything looks okay, but this time when we click on full grid mode, we get this here in the bottom left-hand corner. And what this is, is a warning that will pop up to say that there is something wrong with the layout in full grid mode. If you wanted to ignore this and not continue, that's perfectly fine. You could just go back to single page mode and continue to stitch in single page mode and everything would be great. You don't have to use full grid mode. But in here, for this full, full chart layout here, <clears throat> because there are warnings, we don't display the option to do any markup and we don't display the option to do any symbol selection, but we do let you pan and zoom around. So even if your chart uh, has problems, you can still zoom in here. So here we have, you can see here that the face has been marked up in this particular example. And as we zoom in, you'll start to see um, the underlying PDF appear. So even though there are problems with the chart, we still show the underlying PDF information so a lot of the chart here where you see these green uh, numbers here, that means everything is okay. But we're looking for the problem on the chart because this is telling us that one or more grid pages are not correctly sized. You can use a just grid to correct them. Um, click triangles on the grids for more information. So we're looking for some red triangles on the grid. Ah, here we go. So here you can see these red triangles. Now this one is saying it's 15 by 98. So it's 15 wide by 98 uh, height wise, whereas this one is 12 by 95. And if we look further down, 
he's 12 by 95, he's 12 by 95, and he's 12 by 95. So you're getting the idea, all right, all these 12s, and he must be the bottom here, so he's 12 by 65. So the one that looks quite, maybe doesn't look perfect there, is the fact that he's 12 across, but he's 15 across. So let's just click, if we click on the triangle here, it brings us up with an example. And it's saying there's a chart layout warning on page six. So this page here is page six. And it says the problem is with your current column. And it tells you that the grid on page six is 15 wide. The remaining five grids in this column, that's all of those remaining grids that we've just looked at, are all 12 wide. All, this, all the grids in this column must have the same width. So then Markup RxP gives you the hint. It looks like you may want to update this page's width to 12. Use a just grid to change the width. So Markup RxP has tried to help you identify what's potentially wrong with this chart. And you can see that it looks to be that it's only the width of this chart. The height of the chart looks correct because that's 98, 98 and 98, but it's the width of 15 here, 12. That looks to be the problem. And when we look at our chart in full layout mode, it's that column where the problem is. So what we're going to do is I'm going to turn on linked views so we can see which page we're going to go to. And I'm just going to make sure that the linked view is highlighted so we can see which page we're on. So we're going to select that page because that's the page that we think is incorrect. And I'm going to just adjust the grid. So that will jump in. And here we can see this is our page. This is our sixth page. And we'll jump across and we can see that the overlap here, these three lines here have been included. And this is 15 by 98. And we need to make this chart 12 by 98 so it fits with the rest of the grid. So all we have to do is I'm just going to move that chart in three lines, three rows and just take that overlap off. And now I can see my current grid has gone down to 12 by 98, which I think should be the right size. I'm going to click done. Just let that run through and that's going to go and update the chart and when that updates you can now see that the warnings have disappeared so if we just click the one-to-one -one view the warnings have now disappeared the markup has come back the symbol is available and you can see the markup that you've actually already done on this particular pattern so we can include some additional options um what do we want to do so let's have a look so what we can do is if we zoom in a little bit further we'll see that the, the grid starts to appear. Or alternatively, we can click the preview button and we're back into full grid mode. We can see all of the, what the final pattern should look like. We can basically make out the center line there. But now you're good and you're up and running to use your version seven project in version eight of Markup RxP. So this is covering the case where the, the, the chart may not be perfectly aligned, um, but you can, you can use a just grid to change things around and to get everything up and running. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Right, so now we're on to the final possible outcome that you might get when converting a previous version of a Markup RxP project into the new full grid layout. Again, because Markup RxP is so flexible, um, when we can take in lots of different types of charts, this is a possible outcome when you try converting your project to 0.8. So let's jump into our project here, and you can see I've called it Invalid Layout. And we'll see why it's called Invalid Layout. Excuse me, we'll see why it's called Invalid Layout. So we don't really need to look at the whole project. We're just going to jump into the full page mode to start. Again, please back up your chart before you continue. And do you have a backup? Of course, you've got a backup. Otherwise, you wouldn't be clicking on the yes button. So we'll run through this. And this is what the chart looks like. We'll keep it quite high level. But you can see that the first page is here. You've got the overview page. And then you've got some other pages that have been included. Well, we don't want that page. Uh, we just want to include these pages. Now, Markup RxP has tried to lay this out. And again, there are four pages. So the options are one by four, two by two, or four by one. And if we choose our two by two layout, we can still see that the layout is not perfect. So we can try changing our layout here. 
So instead of having one and three going across, uh, we'll have one and three going down the page, like so. But again, it's, it's still not there. We could try changing the first position here, but it doesn't matter which layout we choose. If, uh, if I alternate between these two things here, the layout is not going to be correct. So we can try and get it as close as we possibly can. There's not really much we can do. Um, so we could leave, leave it like that. This is an example where it, due to the order of the pages in the document, it's very difficult to, well, it's, we can't lay them out in, in a sensible arrangement. But let's see what we can do. So we're not gonna pick any key pages because there's no key pages here. And I'm not gonna bother picking any picture pages. So let's just save this layout. We get our conversion summary, so it's a two by two layout, no key pages, no picture pages. We get the standard text to tell us how we should be laying this chart out. So we're just gonna quickly jump over that. And when I go to full chart view, you're gonna see the, the, the red uh, triangle is up and it says use one or more pages uh, are not correctly sized. So use a just grid to correct them. And you, you know that the pages aren't correct. So it's, it's including the markup that's on the page. We don't have too much to preview in this particular example. But what is useful is you can click on the big red triangle here and that will just remove these red triangles off your grid. So there's nothing we can do, but what we will let you do is we can remove the red triangles and you can then zoom in. And the further you zoom in, you will then see those pages laid out in full grid mode like so. So you can see the pages laid out Markup RxB will still stitch the pages together. So if there was, for some reason, maybe part of the pattern has been laid out correctly and everything's good, uh, this so there, there is still a possibility of um, making use of this particular view. But for this one, we didn't include any key pages. We haven't included any picture pages. And in terms of markup, we don't have any symbols defined and the, the, the grid pages didn't link together at all. But you can still go back to single page mode and in single page mode, you're still free to to choose the stitches uh, and, and the markup. So I don't know if that's, if that's defined. So we can still come in and use single page mode to find out those what those symbols are. And then we can click in the markup and we could mark them up if we so desired. So you can still use your charts. It's just the full chart mode really doesn't kind of make sense. All right, so we have now looked at what's involved in converting a Markup RxP project to be used within the new version 8, and in particular, the full chart layout mode. We've looked at the option of doing nothing uh, and just continuing uh, uh, marking up your project using single page mode. We have then looked at the happy path where if you've got a, a previously auto-loaded project or you've gone through and you've already adjusted all your pages for overlap, Markup RxP will stitch those pages together quite nicely and you won't have any warnings. We've looked at a problem where maybe the overlap has been adjusted on some pages, but maybe not all pages. What happens there? Markup RxP needs a little bit of a helping hand where you go in and you adjust the grids and so you can configure your chart. And we've looked at those examples where it's just the configuration of the chart. There's no real way to stitch those pages together cohesively, but Markup RxP will still put the pages together for you uh, and lay them out so you can see them on one canvas. It's just the actual layout of them isn't gonna be particularly great. So that covers, I think, uh, a lot of the details of how you can take your existing projects that will be loaded into Markup RxP and convert them to be used in the new version of Markup RxP with full chart mode. I hope that was useful. If you have any comments, please leave them below. I'll try and get them answered. If you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. We are looking at putting out a lot more videos around the version 8 and, and all the updated functionality that's gone in there to help make sure that you guys can get the best from Markup RxP. Thanks very much for watching.